Hello students, let's move on to the next module of the chapter gravitation. Now in this module, we'll be going through the characteristics of the gravitational law. Talking about the characteristics or the significance of the gravitational law, the first very important significance is the gravitational force is independent of the intervening medium. What does that mean? Let's take an example. Let's consider two masses separated at a distance of r kept in a medium air. Now let's consider the same two masses kept at the same distance but this time in a medium that is water. Now the question is will the attractive force that is the gravitational attractive force change in water and the answer lies in this mathematical correlation which we had done in the previous module. That is the gravitational force only depends on the product of the masses and it only depends on the square of the distance between the two masses. Other than that, if the medium changes, then the gravitational force will not change. That is, it does not depend on any kind of a medium in which the two masses are kept. So even though the two masses are kept in air and then kept in water, they will experience the same kind of an attractive force depending with respect to the masses and the distance kept fixed. The second characteristics of the gravitational law is the gravitational force is a conservative force. That is the work done and the energy related to the gravitational force in a given system will always be conserved. The third very important characteristic is the force exerted by the first particle on the second is exactly equal and opposite to the force exerted by the second particle on the first. What does that mean? Let's take an example. Let's consider earth and an object. Let's assume the distance between the earth and the object as r and the mass of earth taken as 6 into 10 raised to 24 kg and let's say that object is very small having a mass of 1 kg. Now obviously these two objects or masses have got values and they are separated at a distance of r then according to the gravitational force or gravitational law, there is a force of attraction between the two masses. So let us say the gravity force experienced by the object because of the earth is F1 and the gravity force experienced by the earth due to the object is F2. Now my question over here, carefully understand and give me the answer. Who will experience more force? Is it that the tiny object will experience more force or is it the giant earth who is going to experience more force? Think over and give me the answer in this case. Okay, now in this case, is F1 less than F2 or is F1 greater than F2? Now, if you consider the answer again lies in the mathematical formula. You know F is equal to G M1 M2 upon R square. If I consider R over here as constant, then you know that force is directly proportional to M1 M2. So, if you consider, if I multiply 6 into 10 raised to 24 into 1 or if I multiply 1 into 6 into 10 raised to 24, I am going to get the same result. So, what I mean to say is the magnitude of the force experienced by the earth or by the object is going to be the same. That is, F1 and F2 are same and that is nothing but the statement which says that the force of attraction in magnitude would be the same experienced by the object as well as by the earth. Moving on to the next characteristic, the fourth characteristic, the gravitational force between two particles act along the line joining the two particles and they form an action reaction pair. That is, the gravitational force are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Hence, they obey the Newton's third law of motion. The fifth characteristic being, the force acts along the line joining the two masses. Hence, they are also called as a central force. Just remember these important statements. They could be one-liner, multiple choice questions which could be asked on these statements. The sixth very important characteristics of the gravitational law is, the gravitational force is independent of the nature and size of the bodies until their masses and distance between them are fixed. That is, if you consider the mass to be fixed, the distance between the two masses to be fixed, then gravitational force does not depend on the shape 
or the size of the masses which you are considering. Whether it's a rectangular mass or a spherical mass, it does not depend on that. It just depends on the amount of the masses and the distance between the centers of these two masses. And these are the very important significance of the gravitational law. Thank you.